New poll out this afternoon. BYU Patrick's up to nine. Boise up to 12. We hear parity. Is there a larger lesson and point out of the, uh, the weekend's results? Well, you know, certainly there's something to be said for the, at least in a couple of leagues, as you pointed out, the Mountain West, which last year had Utah that went all the way up to number two in the polls. Uh, BYU has made its case for this year with, a, you know, that big upset of Oklahoma. TCU, which is yet to play, is another team that's very highly thought of. And then Boise has made itself basically a perennial uh, part of the equation. And they, they, you know, are the biggest success story in college football, I think, over the last 10 years. And they're going to be there no matter what. Now, there's still teams in the Mid-American Conference in the Sun Belt that cannot compete. Uh, there's still a bunch of teams in the football bowl subdivision or the championship subdivision that cannot compete. But uh, there's certainly enough other evidence to say that you cannot, as you, as you put it, sleep on those teams in any way. And, Paul, I, I, I think, and you made this point last week, we had another conversation. You don't have to play the SEC road schedule if you play in some of these other conferences. But right there on the belly of the beast of the football epicenter in the SEC, what's the view of these other upsets and when people talk of greater parity in the game? Well, we, we have a, certainly a strong view down here about everyone else. We don't think they belong anywhere uh, in the BCS championship or even in the BCS. But, but I, I think uh, we, we took notice of BYU. That's the game that got the South talking because BYU beat Oklahoma. Uh, I wasn't impressed with Boise beating Oregon, but uh, winning a game at Jerry Jones Stadium and not even hitting the ceiling is a big deal. Heather, what did you make of the weekend? Well, you know, I think that we hear a lot about these, about the little guys, a lot making some noise, but every year it seems like the same story, which is why I was at one of the hearings in Congress last year. You know, are we going to have a change in the Mountain West Conference yelling and, and getting on their, on their pedestal about trying to change the, the BCS system? But I think in the end, things are going to stay the same, and teams like Boise State are going to fight, and they could possibly have undefeated seasons. And in the end, you're going to have teams like Florida, Texas, and Alabama who are going to keep their 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 stay at the top of the heap. Yeah, but Heather, wouldn't the world have really stood up and taken notice had Navy not uh, thrown away or had, had that, that two-point interception uh, at the end returned for two and, and forged a win there in Columbus? Absolutely. You know, Ohio State, they have a, they have a tough task coming ahead of, ahead of them with, with USC. But I tell you what, I, I live in Annapolis. I'm familiar with Paul Johnson and, and his triple option from covering it in the ACC and his times at Navy. And you know what? Not surprised because if you don't face that every day, it's a tough offense to defend. No matter how long you prepare for it, your players just don't see it enough to be able to get used to it. Now, Pat, you sit down as a college athletic director, as a head coach, and you want to schedule one of those early, quote, unquote, easy games maybe for a check and, and sometimes it can blow up in your face what about scheduling philosophies and, and how productive it might be one way or the other a good early test or a good early walkover yeah I, obviously there's two very different schools of doing things unfortunately Bob and I talked to some athletic directors during the summer the trend is more and more to try to schedule guaranteed blowouts uh, because there's just uh, too much to lose if you schedule a difficult game and you lose if Ohio State had lost that game which they came very close to losing their season's pretty much wrecked at that point uh, you know, as opposed to if you go out and get a Charleston Southern, you get the home revenue. And as was pointed out to me by Joe Castiglione, the athletic director at Oklahoma, when I talked to him about this, you know, the, the disincentive for scheduling risky games is huge when you look at a team like Texas Tech that last year was on the brink of getting into a championship if it could have won out without scheduling anybody. Kansas the year before, if it could have won out, did not schedule anybody. But there was no real penalty in the BCS formula for that. They were, if you go undefeated and you're in one of the big six conferences, you got a chance to get in no matter who you play non-conference. Well, that's a pretty big if, if undefeated. And, Paul, an early season loss, you might be able to come back from that. Is it still the case that that's losing by mid-October, you might be able to undo the damage? I've already forgotten about big game Bob Stoops, and I think uh, the point earlier, these games not only hurt you in the BCS, they get you fired. Al Groh's history, uh, Philip Fulmer lost last year at UCLA. He was history. As a result, we know what happened to Lloyd Carr after losing to Appy State, and uh, these games are killers, and ADs really don't want them, although we, we've seen the other side of that where Alabama the, last year and this year played in Atlanta against Clemson and against Virginia Tech, but, but maybe that's not a big deal, beating the ACC. 